Okay, I'm going to start assembling the new CNC machine. I've managed to print all the plates, although I might reprint this one because I changed the joining mechanism. You can see a sort of semicircle here, and there's nothing on this side. Just to add another fixing point a little bit further down here, I changed the, the way these two pieces joined. This was just because of the uh, footprint of the 3D printer I was actually printing the plates on. Um, but I'm not going to start with those yet. I'm going to actually start with the gantry So you can see the way I've designed these so that there's space for the heads of the uh, machine screws that are holding the pivot plate onto the z-axis to Move around and in fact you still get the exact same movement as you would when the machine screws uh, are placed in position I've already put the grub screws in here, this is what's going to trigger the proximity sensors and so the back plate should look like this, it should be the opening should be in the bottom right and then the pivot, uh, the front of the gantry plate should have the grub screw holes at the top this is the voice of Oversight. You'll be hearing me periodically interrupting myself throughout this video to mention things I forgot to mention while doing the thing I was doing. So, while I put the gantry assembly together, I'm going to verbally explain the parts and positionings. The top line of wheels uses eccentric spacers while the bottom ones are fixed. I happen to have quarter inch ones, but you can get and use six millimeters. The spacing is very simple. It is a fixed spacer or eccentric spacer a precision shim, a V-wheel assembled, a precision shim, a spacer, two precision shims, a wheel assembled, a shim, and either a fixed spacer or eccentric spacer. So the thing to just mention at this point is that between the spacer here, there's one shim on one side but two on the other. Put the opposite wheels. If the wheel doesn't pop down, it might be because the shim between the two bearings has slid out. You just use a little stick or something to just push it to one side. I think I'll actually put the nut block on as well just to make sure I'm not going the wrong way around. Okay, so these are 25 mil M5 machine screws, and they will hold the nut block. But I'm missing the spacer. Just need to work out what that's going to be. Okay, this is great. I'm reading my own instructions because I've forgotten. I'm placing the anti backlash nut block onto the rear gantry plate before assembling this section. I intended to space out with four precision shims, but later on in the video I realised I needed five to line everything up properly. When I first made my original CNC machine with ply plates, I also made the nut blocks myself, so the spacing between them and the plates wasn't so crucial as it was bespoke. But I wanted there to be an option with this machine to use shop bought nut blocks. Okay, looks good. And you have the access for that. You want to tighten it up. I then placed the final fixed and eccentric spacers in position on the opposite plate and assembled the gantry section. Okay, that's pretty good. So I got this from Moo's Nest, asked him to cut it to size and it's bang on. So now this just slides on like that. I'm now fitting the gantry to the C-beam aluminium profile. This involves adjusting the eccentric spacers at the top of the assembly so all the wheels are running along the aluminium but ensuring that they are not too tight. So 
So I've already put this together. Obviously, you want to make sure the Z-axis aluminium extrusion is in place. Um, when I was screwing it on, I pushed it to one side just to keep it square. It's tighter, but I haven't tightened it all the way. You see, obviously, you can pivot it. Okay, so this is the Z-plate. Mm, those are the nuts. These fit on like this and get bolted on these screws here. But what I'm going to do first is start to assemble the wheels. Here I'm using 30mm M5 machine screws with either an eccentric or fixed spacer, a shim, a mini V-wheel and a locking nut. Okay, just using this to push the eccentric spacers in. And then I can fit it onto the C-beam to a Z-axis. The notch is facing outwards for these four and then inwards for these these four. And what I'll do is as I drop these down, I'll adjust the first and second one. If it feels a bit too tight, slack it off. You don't want to force it in, you just want it to just ever so slightly be under a bit of tension. You know, when, when you drop it in, you want to be able to feel the wheel moving. I'm just doing the outer ones now. I'm just turning it until I see it moving. It's on this side. Okay, that feels good. When you're happy that all the wheels are in the correct positions, you can do a final tightening of the nuts. So the next thing I'm going to do now is screw these sections on. That's not going in. Ah, so these are, are rubbing on the bit here, so I'm going to have to change them with low profile ones. So I've just put two on for now. Let's see. Yep, so that was the problem. So I've got to take these two off as well. Okay, that's all four of them. I've left the two as they are because that shouldn't get in the way. I also changed the center spindle mount machine screw which would be hidden by the anti-backlash nut block with a 35mm low profile one as this was obstructing the nut block. Yeah, okay, so that's not going to work. So I had to take this part off just so I can get the Allen key in. These are our long ones. Uh, I specifically bought them because I knew I'd be using them for things like this. <laughs> if you find it difficult to tighten up holding the short end, you can use a pair of pliers to hold the hold these. Okay, that is very close there. So it was super rigid and like the gantry plate I've also put a grub screw up here which will detect the pivot plate. So these are the 688Z bearings and these are going to help keep the TR shredded rod in the right place. I'm hoping I've done this correctly. Let's find out. If it was off if it wasn't centered properly, I shouldn't be able to pull down that far. Though, when I do line that up, 
the top plate the top plate is a little bit far forward I could push it back I think it's gonna work I think it's fine this is the washer or the shim that goes on top of the uh, 688Z bearing which is this one here and then the locking collar goes on top and this isn't from any CNC players this is actually a something called a seal washer which I think is for plumbing I'm just going to put the aluminium washer on the end of a more grips and then just by hand I'm just going to take an 8mm bit and that's made all the difference The next thing to do is assemble the Y plates. I printed these in two sections because my 3D printer wasn't large enough and after bolting them together I began to fit the wheels, bearings and nut blocks. I think that's going to go that way. No, you're wrong. It's the other way. Is that right? No, that's wrong. Okay, I've just realised I've made a mistake, which means I'm going to have to go print another one out. Try and it's really silly because I wasn't paying attention. But essentially, the opening for this nut block here means that when the nut block sits in this position, I can access the grub screw, which tensions the thread against the uh, nut block. Uh, but when I went to print these out, I must have flipped this design in Cura instead of exporting the opposite side and if you see this positioned here the opening for this plate, the opposite plate, should be lower down so that it's actually in line with the grub screw uh, and this one isn't um, just an oversight, I knew this, I added it into the design but Obviously there's only so much you can keep in your head um, So I'm gonna have to go back and print these out So a couple 25mm machine screws And it's five precision washers Okay, so I've put all the wheels on uh, they're a little bit loose it just means I can adjust the spacers to make sure there's a snug fit. Okay, I've just done the opposite side. You can see there's a slight difference here. Maybe if I turn it around this way. And that is uh, the opening here are slightly set apart. And it's because the nut blocks when you turn those around the grub screw changes position okay these are seating pretty well once they're on there's no noticeable wobble and there's no gap between pieces i'm now finishing the assembly of the y plates to the c beam and the lower 20 by 40 support profile but i have to tap some holes first And then, just to make sure that this remains nice and flat, I'm just using a large drill bit to take off the raised edge at the top there, because the aluminium would have pulled out a little bit there. So you need to remember to put the nuts in on the side that you want to have the stepper motor. I think, originally I had it on the right hand side, which is that side there. I think this time I may put it on the left. And then you've got to remember to put the 20 by 40 on the bottom side. So these two pieces here have been cut exactly to the same size. I later managed to break the tapping bit in the aluminium, which I couldn't get out no matter what I did. 
I won't cut that out of the video, but if you're making a long, I would recommend to do this by hand or get the correct type of bit for use with a drill. So there's definitely a little bit of flex in the Y plates, but that, then again, I haven't actually tightened this section up. You can see how the pivoting mechanism works. Okay, this is where I begin to run into problems because my work area is not big enough. Anyway, let's see what happens. Okay, I was rushing, I was tapping the holes on the other pieces of aluminum extrusion and my tap just broke. You can just see it poking out right there. I decided to cut the two pieces of C-beam down to 670mm using my table saw sledge and the extension arm. This has kind of worked out as now the CNC machine can sit on one of the workbenches and I won't have to build anything new for that. I will also cut a few lengths of 20 by 40 millimeter profile down to use later as supports for the wasteboard. I think I probably could have done it 68 but that would have been, I think that would have nipped the end of that bit. Anyway, just have to do. Okay, these are the recut uh, X axis C beams. I'm going to re tap the ends and I'm going to do it by hand. So, no machine, nice, careful one rotation forward, half back. Okay, I'm going to reassemble everything again. Um, might actually be easier to work on my table saw, but let's start anyway. So I think if you're going to use a hand drill, just make sure you drop the torque setting or the torque trip down quite a bit. I'm now fitting the front and back motor plates, and then sliding the horizontal support 20 by 40 millimeter profile piece into position, and then undoing the motor plate machine screws to pop a couple of nuts into the countersunk nut areas between the plate and the C-beam, as well as sliding four T-nuts underneath either side of the Y-plate C-beam. So you can make these quite easily, you can buy 3 mil aluminium L section about a metre for about 7 quid uh, but I just 3D printed these, I didn't have the time to wait Okay the next thing I'm going to do is put the wasteboard on and these pieces of aluminium extrusion. I haven't quite worked out the best way of doing this. Really, I think what I should have done was actually cut these short and have a, another piece going across with corner brackets and then the MDF on top of that. I've done it a little bit differently. My wasteboard is two pieces of 18 mil MDF with countersunk holes and some channels on the back for the aluminium extrusion. I got that cut externally, it's a little bit more complicated like that, but in reality it could just be a piece of uh, aluminium on top to start with and then another wasteboard bolted onto that. I think maybe that would have been the best thing to do, but anyway, here I am. I 
I'm gonna do the rest like this and I think I'll try and lift the board around the back and position it all together. It's a bit of an awkward way of doing it. for everything. There's a couple of machine screws I need to put down here. It's getting heavy now. I think this video has come to an end now. The machine is more or less assembled. I'm missing a couple things like the brackets underneath this piece of C-beam, which will create a positive shelf essentially for that to sit on. Everything seems to move really well. Obviously this is a prototype. Um, I don't think PLA really is the material to uh, use over a long period of time but I think I'll be able to get some uh, some cuts from this um, it really depends on how warm the spindle gets in in this particular section here maybe the first thing I'll try and do is recut these out of aluminium maybe it's wishful thinking but if the previous machine managed to do it I feel like this one should as well and the advantage I'll have with this is I'll be able to properly tram and square the machine. I'll have the hard limit stops at the front, which I'll be able to use to m keep it square and make sure I, if I do go off for whatever reason, um, I can always bring it back and square it. And because I can pivot the, the spindle along the, the X and the Y, it should really minimize any errors that can manifest from cutting with a CNC machine, so I'm feeling really optimistic about this. In the next video I'll start to dismantle the old CNC machine and prepare the electronic to be coupled to this one, the new one, Big Red. So until then, thanks again for watching.